to this microlearning session on common formative assessments. Let's start off by looking at different types of assessments so you can get a good idea of what a CFA is and how it's different from other types of assessments. Check for understanding or formative assessment is used during the lesson as a quick check every few minutes and is used to guide instruction at that moment. A summative assessment is given at the end of the unit and is graded to test the student's knowledge. A common formative assessment is given at the end of the week or concept and it's created by the content team and is used to collect data and collaborate so you can form a reteaching plan together and practice that reteaching plan. And district checkpoints are used to assess multiple TEKS across the district. So what exactly is a CFA? I've already said that it's given at the end of the week or concept. It's created in collaboration with your team and built around the most important TEKS. This should mirror the show part of the no show chart that you created and should have only a few questions, maybe five to 10, that can be graded quickly. Your team should collaborate and agree on how the CFAs are scored by creating exemplars. So why do we have CFAs in addition to all the other types of assessments? The CFAs determine where students are in relation to a standard before the end of the unit. You get immediate data so you can evaluate your instructional effectiveness and determine where and how instruction needs to shift so you can meet the needs of your students. It also gives students immediate and timely feedback so they're better able to set goals for themselves and know where they need to seek more help. In creating the CFA, content teachers work together and choose the standard to be assessed based on the show side of the no show chart. Create five to 10 questions using both multiple choice and open-ended questions. Be sure to, of course, refer to your resources such as your field guides and IQ release questions from Lead Forward to see how it's assessed on STAR. Finally, you'll work together to create a teacher exemplar so the whole team will have a common grading system in order to compare results across the team. And then after you give your CFA and grade them, each of your team members gather data from the results and then you choose a high, medium, and low exemplar from the student work. With your team, you decide which skill or questions were missed most often and whether they're conceptual or procedure, procedural errors. Discuss why there's a gap and the best way to reteach the concept, whether it's modeling or guided discourse, and create some practice examples to use with your class. You can learn more about this in the Microlearning DDI Reteach video. This is a great chart that reviews a common formative assessment cycle. It shows what's done as the PLC, creating it, deciding on guidelines, and creating the exemplar, and then what's done on your own, giving the CFA to your students, scoring it, analyzing it, and then choosing your exemplars, and then following up again with your PLC to discuss the results and address how any reteaching will be done. The CFAs offer benefits to both you and your students. It allows you to prioritize standards based on your students and provides consistency in how students are evaluated. CFAs generate immediate feedback in order to shift instruction to meet the needs of your students. The most powerful part of the CFA process is the intentional collaboration that comes from your team. There's a collective analysis and response to students who are having difficulty with their skill. It shifts how you work together to not only build assessments, but how you determine ongoing instruction. You're creating a more in-depth discussion and building your team's capacity to improve its teaching ability. That can really build the teaching skills of campus. When creating your teaching plan, keep these steps in mind. All of these data-driven instruction steps will help ensure that students are getting the best instruction based on their needs in order to help all students achieve success. Thanks for listening.